couple of months ago, I made a video on how to install Octoprint using the Raspberry Pi Imager onto the Pi Zero 2W. And in that video, I asked if there was interest in me continuing on and installing OctoClipper in a future video, and the consensus was overwhelmingly yes. So that is exactly what we're gonna do in today's video. We're gonna pick up where we left off with the OctoPrint install and get OctoClipper up and running. A few weeks back, we tried to get OctoClipper up and running on the ModBot Army YouTube channel on live stream where we do a live stream every single Wednesday, and we ran into quite a bit of issues, and I ended up spending three to four hours after the stream ended trying to figure out what the problem was, and when I finally did, of course, it was something super simple with the primary issue being a lot of the documentation out there on how to get OctoClipper up and running is a little bit dated and missing one or two steps. Although in this video I do my absolute best to sort of break off and explain what's happening, Clipper is a fairly complex firmware and this video does assume that you at least have a general understanding of how it works. At many points in this video I'm going to be referencing other material or resources and all that stuff will be in the description of the video so if you do want to kind of break off and read up a bit more on a few of the things I'm talking about you can go ahead and do so. So with all that being said and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. If you're following along in this video to get OctoClipper up and running, then you should already have OctoPrint installed. If you don't, that's fine. I just made a video two months ago, which I can link you to in the description that will get you kind of brought up to speed here. You should have SSH enabled from the install and you need to go through the initial configuration for your printer and then you will be ready to follow along. The first thing we're gonna do is install the OctoClipper plugin, which is luckily really easy to do. To do that, we'll head up to the top toolbar and click on the wrench icon, which is for the settings menu with an OctoPrint. And in the left-hand side, there is gonna be an option called Plugin Manager. Clicking on that will open up the plugins and we'll need to click the Get More button. In the plugin repository, if you search the word Clip or Clipper, you'll see OctoClipper pop up and then we'll just need to select install. Install should be fairly quick on this and when it's done, you'll see a little prompt in the right hand side saying that you need to restart OctoPrint to enable this. So we'll just click the restart now button. Once it restarts, you will be presented with a very different looking interface. It now says Octo Clipper on the top left, and you've got a tab for Clipper that has some different things in there like status and some of the different macros that come already baked into it and different assistant tools. And then in the top, you can see the toolbar, it says Clipper standby. So we have installed it successfully, and that's all that we need to do with that for right now. Next, we need to SSH into our Pi. If you followed my how to install OctoPrint video from a couple months ago, I did mention that you should always enable SSH so that way if you need to remotely connect to your Pi, you can do so. And this is a perfect example of why we enable it when we're installing OctoPrint. To SSH into your Pi on a Mac, you just need to open up the terminal and it has this functionality baked in. So if you type SSH space Pi at whatever the IP address is that was assigned to your OctoPrint instance, mine is 192.168.194. You'll need to input that there and then hit enter. When you hit enter, it's gonna prompt you with a warning. It's fine, just type yes and hit enter and it will allow you to get beyond this prompt. And then it's gonna ask you for your password. The default password is going to be Raspberry if you haven't changed it. And once you enter Raspberry and hit enter, you'll then see that you are connected to your Pi. If you're on Windows, the only difference is you'll need to use something like Putty, which is a client that will allow you to SSH into your Pi. I can link you in the description over to Putty if you'd like, but if you just Google Putty, it'll pop up. It's probably the most common SSH client I've seen for Windows. And you'll enter your IP address similar to what we did into the host name and select open. It'll give us a very similar warning and we'll just need to check accept and it will ask us for our login, which you will type pi is usually the default. And then again, the password is raspberry. And once you've done that, you will be at the same spot as we are on Mac and everything else will be exactly the same. 
Now that we're connected to our Pi, we'll need to run some commands. All the commands that I am running will be on screen as well as in the description. So you'll really just need to go in the description, copy them, paste them into the terminal and hit enter to then run those commands. This first one here, the git clone is going to copy the clipper directory over to our Pi and it's typically a fairly quick process. Once that's done, we need to run this sudo get update command. This one will require your password because you're running it as sudo. Again, the password password by default is Raspberry. This was the key one I was missing when I was trying to install OctoClipper on stream. Without this update, it will not install correctly, which is the next step. So again, make sure that you follow these things step by step and in the correct order, otherwise you'll run into some issues. Once that completes, we need to type in this Clipper scripts install Octopi command. Uh, this one definitely takes a long time. I think that I saw it usually takes around 15 minutes and I'm not sure if part of it's due to network connectivity or what the primary factor is, but on my end, it was probably 25 minutes. I tried speeding up the clip to be 20 times the actual speed and even then it took forever. So I'm gonna skip past this, but at this point, yeah, go grab yourself a drink or a coffee or whatever and come back in about 15 to 20 minutes. If for some reason you're sitting and watching it install, which I don't recommend, and you think that maybe it froze or something's wrong, the portion that took the longest was where it says building wheel for numpy setup.py. That's probably where it stalled for, I don't know, 10 minutes. If you see it just sitting there, don't worry, it's installing, just give it time. Once that completes, it's going to ask for your password one more time. Again, same thing, just type in Raspberry unless you've changed it and you will be good to move on. Next, we need to CD into the Clipper directory. To do this, we'll type CD space tilde forward slash Clipper forward slash and then hit enter. And we need to open up the menu so that way we can get the code that is needed for flashing our specific MCU. To do that, we'll enter make space menu config and hit enter, which will open up sort of the in-terminal graphic interface. Now, this part's a little bit tricky because there's so many options, but I'll do my best to explain. Basically, the settings you're gonna be choosing here are completely unique to the specific board and MCU that you are running. Whatever printer you're running, you know, is it a big tree tech board? Is it a stock Creality board? And so, based off that, that decides the parameters you're going to need to input. So what I recommend is hopping over to this GitHub where Clipper has a bunch of pre set either generic profiles or, or configurations or specific ones for specific machines. And if you see your printer in there, which a lot of the common ones are there and you open up that config file, on the top of them, they will typically tell you how you need to set the parameters in order to be able to flash your board. And again, they can be unique, very unique to the specific board and the specific MCU of that board. For the uh, SR, I found this article over at 3dprintbeginner.com that has the parameters that I need. The issue I ran into at the beginning was that there are apparently two different boards in the SR machines, a nano board and a big tree tech clone type board. So I recommend always opening up your printer and looking at the main board to make sure that one, you have the correct board and two, you can actually read the MCU off of the chip itself uh, to kind of confirm that you're compiling this code for the correct board and the correct MCU. Once you've located the correct settings for your board and the MCU, the this part is easy. You're just gonna use the arrow keys on your keyboard and enter to select something. So using the parameters I found for the SKR type board on the FL Sun SR, I'm choosing those things and everything else looks good here. I'm going to be using a USB to connect from the Pi to the MCU. So I'm not going to change that because that's the default value. And once everything is good here and you've got the settings set correctly, you'll hit Q on the keyboard and then Y to save the configuration. Now, the next step is to actually flash your board. And this process also is going to vary heavily from board to board. Some boards, if you have everything plugged in, you could just run the command make space flash and it will flash your board um, without needing to do anything else. But in my case, I actually have to copy the bin file over to a micro SD card and manually insert it into my board. So 
For mine, I'm going to input make. Again, this is something that would be also in the top of the config file. Typically, when it tells you how to compile it, it'll also tell you the correct method to flash. And so once I input make, it's going to now build the firmware for my specific board. Once that completes, it's going to generate a clipper.bin file, and that's the file that we physically need to get. So that way we can put it onto a micro SD card and plug it into our board. And the easiest way to do this is probably using an FTP client on Mac. I'm using FileZilla on Windows. The most common one I use is WinSCP. They pretty much work the exact same way. And this will allow us to access the Pi and get files from there to put onto our computer. So to do this, all you're going to need is the IP address for your Pi, similar to when we SSH'd. And the default value, once again, for this is Pi for the username and Raspberry for the password. The port should be port 22. Similarly, it's going to give you a warning. You're just going to click OK. And on the right side now, this is the root of our Pi and all of the files on it. So to access this bin file, we'll need to open the Clipper folder and then the out folder. And what we're looking for is the file named clipper.bin. Once you've located that, if you click and drag it, you can drag it somewhere locally. I'm just going to drag it onto uh, my downloads so that way I've got access to it. For the SKR boards, not only do you have to have the bin file on the micro SD card, it also has to have a certain naming convention. So we need to rename it from clipper.bin to firmware.bin. Once you've got it renamed and copied over to your micro SD card, we can eject it and plug it into our board and then we need to power on our printer. It usually takes just a few seconds to flash it. To be safe, you can leave it in there for 60 seconds, but then you can turn off the printer. And if you want to confirm that it did flash correctly, if you plug that micro SD card back into your computer, it will be renamed from firmware.bin to firmware.cur. With our board flashed and our printer plugged in and the board plugged into the Raspberry Pi over USB, we need to head back over to our SSH client and enter this ls dev serial command. When we enter this, it's going to give us back a value. This is the specific port that is connected to our controller. And just take this value and copy and paste it over to something like Notepad or a clipboard of sorts. So that way we can access it in a moment here. At this point, when you go to OctoPrint or OctoClipper, you should be getting a notice saying that it doesn't detect a printer.cfg file. And the printer.cfg file is actually the same files that we were looking at earlier on in the repository that showed you how to flash a specific MCU. So your best bet is to go over here and hope that you see it for your board. If you can find it for your specific machine, that's even better, but at least for your specific board. And this will give you a lot of the things like the pin mappings and the correct values for things like stepper motors and your hot end and your bed. You can always configure this from scratch if you can find your specific board's pinouts, but that is definitely a much more tedious and complex route to go. As a bare minimum, I would recommend at least starting off with a generic configuration that they have over in this repository because it will get you part of the way there if they don't have your specific machine or specific board. Another place to check that I discovered is I don't use Facebook at all, but there are specific machine Facebook groups and in those groups there is a file section and I was actually able to find a configuration file in that section for the FL Sun SR. This was unfortunately for the Nano board and not for my board, but that is another great place to check for config files if you don't see them in the official Clipper repository. Teaching Tech has a really good video going over this as well, and he actually built a printer config for the FL Sun SR, which is what I ended up using. And he shows in his video that he used the default parameters that they had for Delta printers and the config for the other FL Sun machine kind of as a basis and sort of meshed those two together. So I could place a link in the description over to that video because I do think there is a lot of value uh, in watching that video as well as far as the process of kind of manually configuring some of the settings. Regardless of whether you got your printer.cfg file from the repository, another source, or configured it yourself, you are going to be needing it. Again, I'm using Teaching Text, and I can link you to his repository in the description as well. I am then opening it up in TextEdit. Another uh, code editor is probably going to be better than this, but it works fine. And we're going to need to replace the serial port with the COM port we got and that we pasted to a notepad a moment ago. So I'm going to copy that in and under the MCU header where it says serial, 
that is where that value is going to be pasted. If you don't replace it with yours, it will not connect to your machine and function correctly. Once you've got it put in, we can close out the other notepad. We're not going to be needing that again. And then we'll need to save our printer.cfg file so that way it, we make sure it updates with that correct COM port information. With OctoClipper, you should be able to go to the Clipper tab, go to Show Editor, and paste in all of that printer.cfg information, making sure that the file name in the bottom left says printer.cfg, and then hitting save, which will then restart the Pi, and then you should be good to go. However, for whatever reasoning, it didn't seem to actually be creating the printer.cfg file on my OctoClipper. So what I ended up doing was manually updating or uploading that printer.cfg files. If it doesn't work for you, going back over to the FTP, if you grab that printer.cfg file, you just need to drag and drop it into the root directory of your Pi, as you see me doing here, and then restarting the OctoClipper instance. And when you restart the OctoClipper instance, if that is done correctly, you should now be able to fully control your printer and do anything you'd normally do. I always recommend when you first install a new firmware, it doesn't matter what firmware it is, to verify that everything's working correctly. Obviously confirm the end stomps are working, the fans are working, the thermistor, the um, you know, the heating elements and all of those different things before you actually run a job. But at this point, once you verify those things within OctoPrint or OctoClipper, then you'd want to do things like uh, Pressure Advance and Input Shaper, and you can then start to play around with things like macros. The official Clipper documentation has a great page on configuration checks that runs you through verifying the heaters, making sure that bed leveling is working, PID tuning, the emergency stop commands working, and then it'll guide you through Pressure Advance and Input Shaper. So I'm going to link that in the description because this is a great reference for once you are connected with your printer after you follow this video. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you've now got OctoClipper up and running or at least a much better understanding of what the process looks like. I still have a ton of tuning to do on this machine, so this is really just the beginning. And I actually also want to play around with the new 2.1 release of Mainsail, which I'll probably cover in an upcoming video. Let me know in the comments if there's anything specific with the Clipper firmware that you would like me to make a video or a guide on. I'm by no means a Clipper expert, but I do have Clipper now running on two Vorons, a, this machine, another Cartesian printer, uh, and I am going to be building the switch wire, so I'm definitely gaining more familiarity, and I have a few other Clipper-related videos lined up in the coming weeks or months, but if there are particular topics that there is a lot of interest in me covering, let me know, and I will try my best to prioritize those. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I'll place links down below in the description over to our Patreon where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys!